Welcome. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at an interview which has gone viral on YouTube. This is Piers Morgan interview. He's talking to two women about various issues, including gender equality. It's very interesting. Let's look at what they say, and I'm going to make some comments on it as we go through it. If you like this video, like and share and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below, and let's get into it. Well, joining me in the studio is socialist and author Grace Blakely and YouTube commentator Pearl Davis, uh, both, I would imagine, identifying as provocateurs. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about this first of all, Pearl. I I just find the whole personal pronoun thing honestly absurd. I, my personal pronouns on my Twitter biography are now uh, hot, hotter, hottest. <laughs> and I, from really, really, Piers. Why? Which one is it? Why would it be hot and hotter? Choose one. You can't be comparative and superlative at the same time. Frankly, if people don't call me those then they have to be jailed. I go along with that. <laughs> that is quite funny. <laughs> but I did that to highlight that when I do that and say that, people then accuse me of being ridiculous. I think the whole thing is ridiculous. Why do we need personal pronouns? We I don't need it. personal pronouns. I honestly, I don't think it's kind to allow people to live in delusion. Wait, Look, right we, know, we all know, we all know what a man and a woman is, okay? Just because you dress like a woman, talk like a woman, act like a woman, it does not make you a woman. If I randomly choose to shift gender identity mid-sentence, is that all of a sudden unacceptable? Is that what she's saying? That sounds very last century to me. And I am so tired of us allowing these people to let us live in delusion. It is delusional to think you are the opposite gender, and it is not kind I to I can't even that. go on... I love flying British Airways, right? My preferred airline. Mm -hmm. The wonderful airline. And they always used to, there always be a lovely, posh voice saying, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Britain. And I used to felt soothing, particularly if I came from another country back to Britain. I felt immediately at ease. My captain was there, sounding like he was, you know, from some wonderful Pathé news bulletin. And he referred to us as ladies and gentlemen. Interesting. I think that most flights since the late 80s have been conducted on autopilot, especially for long haul journeys. That's now been banned. They're not allowed to say, ladies and gentlemen, because there might be one person on the plane who says, oh, whoa, whoa, hang on. I don't identify as a lady or a gentleman. Well, OK, fine. I don't care. But I do. So where's my right? He identifies as a lady, does he, Piers? I'm kidding. Hi. To be called a gentleman. Piers, I you know how I feel about this. I'm so, so bored of it all. I'm so bored of the fact that this is the one item that's constantly coming up over and over and over again. And you can completely see why, right? Conservative governments have destroyed our economy. Hang on, what's that got to do with what Piers is saying? Piers is asking, why can we not use the phrase ladies and gentlemen? And suddenly this woman is launching into a randomly selected tirade about the government destroying the economy. I mean, it is true. They have, of course, plagued civilization with unimaginable debt and crippled us all and ruined everyone's future. But it would have been the same under a Labour government. The key, though, is she isn't answering his question. But let's listen to her tirade. In the middle of a massive climate crisis, just after the hottest week ever. I've just... A massive climate crisis. Is that true, Grace, or is that utter hogwash as well? Now, you might not want me to say this, but I am going to share with you a, a little screenshot here. We've got a quote from John F. Clauser, who won a Nobel Prize in Physics last year, 2022. He is a Nobel Physics Prize winner, and he writes climate idiocy. No climate crisis exists, and the IPCC, which is the International Panel on Climate Change, is, according to John, one of the worst sources of dangerous misinformation ever. So clearly, he doesn't agree that there is a is climate crisis. But let's listen to what Grace says. It just doesn't matter. Yeah, but you see, it doesn't matter. But it hang doesn't on, hang on. Hang on. But hang on. Mm, it doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't matter to you. I'm so bored. It doesn't matter it to is. you, but it does matter to women in sport. It does matter to sure. women whose young daughters might be. Sure. So which is it? She's contradicting herself, this young woman. Using these dressing of course, rooms. Unless... It does matter to the victims of male rapists who see their attackers identify as women to get into women's prisons. Those... Great points from Piers. Sorry, issues. so when you say they don't matter, they really do Let's matter. Let's have those issues aired in the appropriate, you know, spaces. We are. In, you know, in sports, That's... have that discussion amongst well, those sports you know, people. Lucky... But, like, literally, it's about priorities, isn't it? Lucky there is a certain you. number I'm, of times I'm, I'm that we athlete. have on these shows to discuss I, the issues that matter. I play, I play and, like, you don't think the... women's... Hang on, you don't... before we come to our next... I don't think women's sport matters as much as climate change. Because women's... No. I actually don't think either women's sports or climate change matter at all. Let's face it, nobody really cares about women's sports. 
with a few notable exceptions, but largely we all know that there's a massive public relations push to get people to care about women's sports. If they did organically care about them, then they would queue and they would buy tickets in the same numbers as they do for male sports, but that just doesn't happen. They also don't really care about climate. People just want to look after their lives and families. And really the whole climate thing, I'm sorry, I'm not going to go off on a tangent here, but unless and until you can really internalize the obvious reality, which is that climate science is largely a pseudoscience, it's all paid for by government to divide and conquer the population, impoverish everybody, get everybody to sign up to a climate exchange while people like John Kerry are flying around the world in a private jet and sitting at the top of the pyramid. People like Al Gore own Octopus Energy or is a massive shareholder in it. He's one of the board directors, makes untold profits from just exerting these controls over renewables and reducing your access to fossil fuels. It's all a huge sham designed to help governments consolidate power and make everybody else below them poor. We have to realize that that's the case. I'm not going to argue with anybody about it. It is what's happening. You can research it for yourself. And that's just a fact. But let's listen to what she's saying. I think that does having a planet matter? in which we can play sport does, matters more than the Does women's sport. equality matter? I know that that would be probably absolutely Does women's insane. equality matter to you? Well, I mean, yeah, of course. But actually, okay. I mean, the whole point okay. like, that I was going to make on this segment, actually, is that, like, you cannot separate feminism from class issues. Mm. You cannot separate feminism from class issues. What does that even mean? Does that mean that only rich women have enough leisure to act in an aggressively feministic way and demand that everybody acquiesces to their tyranny? Does it mean that you have to achieve a certain level of wealth before you can try and oppress, oppress everybody else? I mean, I don't know what she means by that. Like, if you're just going around saying, like, I don't know, um, I think the female CEO of a weapons manufacturer should mm. be paid the same as a male CEO, and that's the hill I'm going to die on. I'm not fighting that fight with you. Well, no one's ever going around saying that. Who? Who is advocating for that? It's ridiculous. And the role is appointed not based on gender, but based on competence. So if somebody's able, in a job like a top CEO of a weapons company, there's so much that you have to be able to do and deliver, negotiating massive multi-billion dollar contracts, speaking with people, traveling all over the world, untold quantities of work, 80 hour work weeks, week in, week out. The gender is irrelevant. The, the role itself requires a massive level of dedication. There has to be a commensurate level of recompense for these high responsibility roles. And that is the case regardless of the gender of the person occupying the role. The person occupying the role doesn't matter, it's irrelevant. The fact is that top jobs tend to be done by men because men are willing, especially if they're healthy, to work 80 hours a week. They don't have to deal with so much of the burden of childcare, whereas women want to be involved in childcare and don't want to take on these high responsibility jobs. That's just biological reality. It's not a question of oppression of one gender over the other. This is just what takes place. Because ultimately, like, what I care about are the struggles that ordinary women face okay. every day. Well, let's come... What struggles that ordinary women face? To the, the main <laughs> point of the segment, which is this issue of women's rights to be paid the same as men in sport. Now, the Australian women's football team have criticised the pay gap in the upcoming World Cup prize money. Let's take a look at what they said. 736 footballers have the honour of representing their country on the world's biggest stage this tournament. Yet many are still denied the basic right to organise and collectively bargain. Collective bargaining has allowed us to ensure we now get the same conditions as the Socceroos, with one exception. FIFA will still only offer women one quarter as much prize money as men for the same achievement. <laughs> for the same achievement. <laughs> for the same achievement. <laughs> oh, well, that's so funny. <laughs> okay, let's give that woman a chance. FIFA will only offer men a quarter of the money for, do, for, for the same achievement. As, that sounds a little bit like Dame Edna Average, doesn't it? There's no way that women achieve the same things. Could she run alongside Jack Grealish on one of his training sessions where he's doing interval sprints of one 200 meters consistently for 60 or 75 minutes, sprinting, then having a rest, then doing it over and over again, and consistently covering 100 meters in 11 seconds or less? Of course she couldn't. The level of aerobic fitness and muscularity and technical skill that the top male FIFA players have outclasses those of the females by orders of magnitude. And that doesn't mean that women are bad. It just means... It's a biological reality that they can't compete on the same playing field. It's not the same achievement. It's a completely different sport. It's the same with tennis. Men's tennis, good as me. Djokovic, Nadal, these guys serving at 143 miles an hour. 
Carlos Alcaraz doing a 400 turn winner at 93 miles an hour. You've seen mixed doubles matches all over YouTube where Roger Federer will be playing against a female opponent on the other side of the net. He's still going to serve 140. And the serves are non-returnable for the female players. So it's not the same achievement. If people don't want to pay to watch women to play sports, then demanding that women are paid the same money for doing that job, it's communism. It's communism. It's it's saying, oh, the, the demand should be there, even though it isn't there. You know, if I invent a phone that everyone hates, I, nobody should pay me just because I've invented this phone, which is what, 5% of the functionality of an iPhone. Oh, but I want you to give me the same amount of money. Well, no one cares. It's no good. So unless I can force the government or men or lobby for people to give me some cash, then because I'm not meeting the needs of customers, it's not going to be possible for me to earn that revenue. It's the same with this. If the players aren't, for whatever reason, attracting the audience members and the ticket buyers, they can't expect to receive the same recompense. It's just that simple. Well, OK, this is an interesting, Paul, because if you look at the revenue, for example, in 2019, FIFA generated uh, £586 million in total revenue. The men's uh, for the 2019-22 cycle, £5.8 billion, uh, record revenue through the men's World Cup. So the, the, the women's game has come on in leaps and bounds. The English Lionesses, fantastic win, sell-out crowds, they're making a lot more money. They're definitely way, way further now towards where the men are commercially than they were, but they're still a way off. Mm -hmm. And when you saw at Wimbledon, for example, the men's final was watched by three times as many people, and yet they were both free to wear on the BBC. You could watch both if you wanted to. So there was three times as much interest in the men's game. They played two sets more per match mm -hmm. than the women do, and yet the women get equal pay. I'm not quite sure why... Yeah, so this is a form of discrimination against male players. Piers has hit the nail on the head. He hasn't said that outright, but that is clearly the case. Look, for instance, at Simona Halep, right? Here's a player. She's a good player. Obviously, she's been banned for Roxadust that use. Whether or not she actually did that, we don't know. The trial is yet to take place. We'll see if she actually proves her innocence or not, or whether or not she's guilty. But back in 2019, she beat Serena Williams in the final of Wimbledon, and she walked away with, it looks like, I think it was $2.35 million of prize money in for a match, which she won, 6-2, 6-2, two sets in 56 minutes. So in less than an hour, this girl racked in $2.35 million. Now, if she'd only won or been a runner-up, rather, she would have won, if you can really see this, it's up there, a one, one and a bit million, not 2.35. And this is to say nothing of all of the sponsorship money that she will have made. Now, Djokovic this year lost to Alcaraz in the 2023 Wimbledon final, and he made that runner-up money. Same for female and ladies and men's finals, same prize money. So objectively, the level of energy expenditure necessary for the winner of the men's final to win that money, the top level of prize money, compared to what was needed. I'm not dismissing Simona's achievement here, even though it sounds like I might be. She did well to beat Williams. But come on, an hour, two sets versus five hours of five set match, Alcaraz versus Djokovic. I mean, she will say herself that she isn't discriminated against. It's a massive coup for female players that they're getting the same prize money as male ones. It's insane when you think about it. There is no discrimination in tennis unless it's against male players. Because like, think about it, right? The number 800 male player in the world could, I think, beat, was it number 700? Beat Serena Williams and only one, lost one game in two sets. So that means that there are seven or 800 male players who are objectively better at tennis than the female number one player in the world is. None of those have 40 millions of dollars of prize money like this woman does. None of them. And nobody mentions this. I'm not just saying that, it's, you know, this is these are market forces, but let's not pretend that it's all, you know, it's the case that women are being discriminated against. It objectively isn't, but it's just a useful it's topic a matter of for a lot of these people. It's just a matter of fairness, isn't it? Yeah, well, I, I won. I think all of the women should thank the men for funding our leagues because yeah, most correct. of our leagues would not exist without the men, number mm. one. Number two, when we have the same numbers, then we should get the same pay. Right. I'm sorry, I play I play vo volleyball at the highest level, and it's like when we make what the men make and get the crowds that the men draw, then we should get paid the same. Well, see, why, is I, it, why is it actually a fight for equality, Grace? I mean... Why, if, if women in a particular sport, for example, turned out to generate more revenue, right, because they were more watchable, and in America, the, the women's 
football team is better than the men, and they do generate, even at school level, far more interest from girls than boys, for example, I don't see why equality should be the aim. Why shouldn't they get paid more than the men? Well, look, I mean, there are... It's a great point, isn't it? You know, they, they could earn more. It's not about... It's just objectively about demand and supply. And he's trying to say to her, look, if your actual aim was pay based on excellence, then you wouldn't let the empirical level of somebody else's pay or performance dictate what you should expect to be paid for your own. You would actually be striving, like Piers has said, for a certain standard and just keep on striving. But they use the male pay level as a benchmark. But even that will never be enough because they'll say, you know, once once you give these people an inch, they take 10 miles. All sorts of problems with the way that this market for labour, and it is basically a market for labour works. Like, I personally don't think that the top football players in the world should be paid as much as they do. I think it's ridiculous, the amount... Well, that's market of, force. Of an, exactly. It's market forces. Well, why shouldn't should they get that? Should that be the way that we decide, you know, who, who, decide who generates you? what... Who generates who what... Well, they get, they get... Yeah, who is to decide? This is the problem I have with these socialists, like this woman in particular. She claims to be magnanimous by saying, oh, these top players shouldn't be earning all this money. And you've probably heard about Kylian Mbappe, who is going to be paid hundreds of millions, I think $700 million by Saudi Arabia for moving over there and playing for one season over there, which worked out to be something like £20 a minute. And it's a lot of money. That's true. It's a lot of money. But who who should determine who earns that money? If it was up to this girl, she would say that there should be a limit to how much someone's paid. And I think the opposite is true. If for whatever reason you have some sort of skill and people are interested in paying you the money, that's fine. Why should we prevent somebody from earning that money? And let me give you a particularly stark example of this, right? This girl, Grace, let's get to know Grace Blakely, shall we? Grace Blakely here, she went to a private school. She went to a private school in Hampshire. And that private school in Hampshire is expensive to go to. So if you want to go to that private school in Hampshire, let's have a look at the fees. Uh, it is this one, sorry. You have to pay £12,000 a term to go to that school that she went to. She, she may have gone there for up to seven years. It depends if she was a full, fully boarded student or half board. I don't know. But either way, she will have been paying £36,000 per term for seven years. So it's £200,000 is what she spent on her education. Now, imagine if somebody had come to her parents and said, we don't want you to send Grace to a private fee-paying school. Well, you know, we don't think that the school should be paid out. We don't think that you should be paying uh, for her to go there. We want to demand that she receives a free education. Would that have been an acceptable statement to make to her or her family or her parents? No. Why? Because freedom of choice is crucial to enable us to live in a civilized society. If they want to send her to a school like that, they should be free to send her to a school like that, not to have somebody else interfere with their purchasing choices. In the same way, if owner of a football team wants to play its players hundreds of millions of dollars a year or pounds, or you know that that's how the contract shakes out for that player, then somebody like her shouldn't stand between the free, you know, mutually consented agreement between the player and the organization that's pay paying the player. Why can the freedom of choice that extended to her education not also apply to the very players that she is attacking. And the reason why is it comes down to the politics of, of envy. That's why, I'm sorry, but it does. We have to realize there are people in the world who are better at certain things. I'm never going to be a top NBA player or a top footballer. But do I feel any animosity towards the people who are able to make all the money that they do from playing in those sports? No, because it entertains a lot of people and it provides a lot of value it's, it supports a huge industry. These are role models and it's entertaining and that's what the market supports. So that's fine. Why should I have a problem with what somebody else earns? Does it make my life worse if they have lots of money? No, of course not. It makes it better. And until you can adopt an abundance mentality where you're not bothered about what other people earn, you're always going to be stuck in this resentment envy politics, which is, I think, childish and very counterproductive. It's a retrograde step for the progress of civilization. And it's something I can never support. But let's listen to what she says. Favor of the fact that they came out there and said collective bargaining. Ultimately, like the average worker in this country hasn't had a pay no. rise in over a decade. I'm How so is tired. that going to change? I am That's so going to change when they organize whining. with one another. There we go. Resentment organizing. The, the answer to really helping businesses and individuals succeed isn't so much in demanding increased minimum wages it's reducing taxes the problem with minimum wages is it forces a business 
to pay an individual more than what they would earn for work that they do. And it prevents them from learning the skills on the job necessary to command a higher wage. And it also increases the risks that these big companies are just going to automate their workforces. Why would they employ young staff what, that they have to pay healthcare and pensions for if they can just get a machine to do everything for them, like they're doing in McDonald's and all these other places? So however well-intentioned minimum wage ideology is, it's stupid because it just makes life harder for the poorest in society. And, you know, you need time to be able to explain this to these people. But the problem is that this woman just loves the sound of her own voice so much that you just can't actually communicate the idiocy of socialism to her at all because she's incapable of letting you get even a few words in. It's frankly emetic and horrifying. But they get to stand above the problems and act as though they're offering a solution that helps everybody. Oh, we need to tax the rich more. Tax us any more and there will be no productive citizens left in the country because they'll all leave. Seriously, why would you stay in the UK if you're going to have to give two thirds or more away of your money to the government, only to be left with crumbs that are going to be inflated away ad infinitum. It's horrifying. I'm so oh. tired of women whining. Mate, it's the like only person whining the men, at the moment the is The men, the men, literally the men fund our leagues and we will still whine that we don't get paid enough. And honestly, when athletes do shit like this, it makes all of us look bad because instead of being thankful True. for the league that we have, we go out and whine and complain about the pay. A voice of wisdom. You know, we could try and prop up an artificial system, but it will only end in ruin. And as it ends in ruin, that's going to make these women a lot more unhappy than they would be if they just let natural forces of the market play out. But you can't explain this to people whose entire identity is wrapped up in this kind of resentment organization and who, you know, pinned themselves to beating down an imaginary straw man of grievance and oppression that doesn't actually exist. It's really... Terrifying. I'm not whining. You sound like you're maybe doing a bit of whining. But like personally, I don't think we should be whining. I think people should be organizing. If you, you want a, if you you want a pay that, increase, you think, join a union, get out there and fight for it. The All right. So if you're an employer, are you likely to give more money to a worker just because a union bamboozles you into doing so? How about the employee thinks about it from the perspective of the employer? How about the employee actually? Because this is any time you're working with members of the public and you're trying to figure out how to please customers. You don't know how to do that straight away, right? It takes time to build the skills necessary. If I demand a pay increase, but I'm not offering anything in return, do I really deserve one? Of course I don't. But if I try and understand how I could actually add value and say, well, you know, if, if I'm able to do this, bring you these customers, generate this extra X percent revenue increase for your company in this time frame, Y time frame. Could I expect a percentage of the commission? If, if so, could we move ahead with that? And then that they're far more likely to approve such a suggestion than they are to give you money just because you've whined at them. So I don't think that this whole idea of getting people to unionize is going to be productive in the long term. Should the women footballers get the same as the men? Yeah, I think it probably makes sense. Even if they're not but making anything like the revenue. Ultimately, like it's the not going to change. Footballers lost it's not going to change unless they organize. Team. That's actually true across every sector let in me the economy. Me, how much, if you right, want to pay ask, rise, okay. join a union let, and fight uh, for let one. Let me ask you this, sir. Very evil. Her privileged education and what's she doing now? She's using her prominent place, you know, on a national news platform to advocate for resentment and thievery. It's just awful. The pits of the earth. They have got you. Quite frankly. Exactly. Me, the US women's football team were beaten by a group of under-15 boys yeah, from Texas, right? Who were very good under-15 boys, but they're under-15 boys team. Beat them.